everybody. Welcome back for our penultimate episode of The Day Shift, our Hunter the Reckoning Chronicle, set in Miami. Um, Before we dive into the action here and get back to our story, I do want to remind everybody that this is set in the world of darkness. Things are going to get uncomfortable. It is going to get ugly. Um, There might be cases where some things on screen make you uncomfortable. Feel free to step away. Take whatever time you need to feel okay and to feel safe coming back. We as a group have discussed safety tools um, and have some things in place to make sure that everyone sitting here feels comfortable in this game. Um, We encourage you to do the same at your home tables. Also, nothing I say is canon. Uh, Please do not take my word as law. I am just a a lowly storyteller um, enjoying this whole experience as much as everyone else. So um, canonically speaking, none of this is canon. You heard it here first. But... Um, for our our players this evening, uh, they are they are pretty rad, even if they aren't canon. Um, I want to hear about who you are and who you're playing. Let's start off with Luis this week. Okay, hi everybody. I'm Luis Carrazo. Um, I am playing Diego Dominguez, professor of ancient history at the University of Miami, um, a uh, an intellectual and an academic and a researcher extraordinaire uh, with a bit of an obsession with the supernatural and mostly when researching history he's always been trying to pinpoint supernatural events or or entities and their participation uh, or influence over major historical events and he has found himself here in a what looks like a military complex after an encounter with our with the rest of his uh, cellmates <laughs> um, with the supernatural and uh, has been recruited by the um, the boss of this uh, uh, military uh, outfitting um, and is all for it uh, uh, is all about learning as much as possible about these this werewolf right now in question yeah colonel kellogg knows an easy mark when she sees it uh, <laughs> easy bullseye right here yep exactly uh brianna how about you hi guys i'm brianna i go by utahime on the social of the medias um you can find me at utahime cosplay um and at brianna de costa on twitter uh as the name suggests i'm a cosplayer and um i'm also too a huge ttrpg enthusiast and performer uh so i'm always up to lots of shenanigans um i'm playing uh angelique but she goes by angel dubois um the owner of the blue bayou who also too um kind of inherited a special sense for uh, things that are not of this world or not natural in any way. And um, she's been kind of trying to get more in tune with that, um, especially given this uh, extreme situation. I think it's been kind of bringing more of that uh, that quality, uh, hidden ability out of her for sure. Excellent, spectacular. Um, Marquia, how about you? Hey all, I'm Markia McCarty. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's M-A-R-K-E-I-A-M-C-C-A-R-T-Y or Darth Markia and on some other platforms. Uh, I am playing Core Springman. And Core Springman is basically a bubbly, badass cat lady. And uh, that's what she's bringing to the table. She's very good at um, improvising gear. That's uh, one of her edges of uh, being able to Just like the luxury event planner that she is, uh, she can make lemonade out of lemons in every way, shape, and form. Like that's, okay, that's her new tagline. She makes lemonade out of lemons uh, in every situation. So um, yeah, she has, she was abducted by this, you know, agency that is uh, fighting against the dark. And now she realizes that she also wants to fight against the dark. Uh, They've been giving her a lot of uh, stick with it where it's they're watching her her niece uh, who means a whole lot to her and everything um she's wondering what the carrot is but she's pretty much on board to go ahead and take out some baddies that she realizes she was helping and that she built her career on so ooh, there's a there's a lot that has to be atoned for you've got some guilt you want to get off your shoulders um, wonderful. And last but certainly not least, our beloved Barry Sark. Justice, who are you? 
Hi, everybody. My name is Justice uh, Stash Mendu on the socials, and I'm playing Barry, um, who is uh, in over his head and uh, in uncomfortable one on one personal situations. And um, he is he is waiting for the next shoe to drop and uh, really wants to know more about the other side of things that we haven't seen. We've seen lots of werewolves, but there was that dude at the bar that made somebody step into the line of fire, as it were. And that is very curious. You know, I have suspicions that um, Barry is going to be very pleased at the end of this episode. So, mm. um Yes, I I too can't can't wait to see more. Um, and I'm your storyteller this evening. My name is Diana D'Amico. Um, without any further ado, I want to get back into it. How do you guys feel? All right, let's do it. <clears throat> Last week, our hunters found themselves in an underground government facility run by one Colonel Linda Kellogg. After the startling realization that they were just one of dozens of captives being held in this complex, Angel's feeling that there were supernatural threats all around them seemed to make more and more sense. Diego, recognized for his proclivity to research and knowledge, was singled out and offered a unique opportunity to learn about the creature who consumed his every waking thought for the past 24 hours. The opportunity to become like them. Sergeant Robbie, recognizing that Cor was the only one who'd be able to calm down Hades, led her to her beloved cat, providing a moment for a very candid conversation about the monsters that kept her ignorant and made her rich. Barry and Angel were given a few moments to reflect on aspects of their humanity that now seemed like distant memories in the face of this strange new world. Everyone was brought back together where, with a sense of urgency, Colonel Kellogg told the hunters that they and their loved ones were in danger, that Isaac's murderers knew who they were and where to find them, and that they were going to have to act fast. Colonel Kellogg shuts the laptop that she had open in front of you and sort of slides a file across the table in each of your directions, your name across the top. She says, you must have a lot of questions looking at you one by one. Let's start with who I am and where you are. I'm Colonel Kellogg of the Information Awareness Office, a top secret military division dedicated to total information awareness about all threats to the United States of America. You are in an undisclosed compound hidden near the Miami Harbor. Does everyone follow me so far? Wonderful. So normally when an operation like that at the Albert I. DuPont building goes to shit, we neutralize the parties involved to avoid any kind of leak. However, in this case, we feel that we have a common goal that could be useful if we work together. Who starts flipping through their folder? Immediately. That's my go-to. Okay. Flip through pages and absorb knowledge. Um, Diego, your file is probably the thinnest of the bunch simply because you don't have a lot of interaction with the outside world. You're sort of a hermit and you like it that way. Um, but it does... The, the file itself contains information about a lot of your research studies, um, about all of your course schedules, oddly enough. Um, there's information about um, Mrs. Partridge, the librarian who was shown on the screen, um, mm. as well as your teaching assistant, uh, the dean who's been giving you kind of a hard time lately. Um, there's a lot of very personal things to the uh, the the strange information about like books you've checked out and places you seem to frequent, which is pretty much just like the deli down the street from your office. And then, um, you know, your office really, and, and the library. Um, but it, it has some odd personal details about like your upbringing and maybe interactions with the law, whether they were very neutral things like speeding tickets or stuff like that. Um, it, just very personal, very tailored and things that you wouldn't think anyone would ever care about. Hmm. Um, Angel, your file 
is medium thickness, we'll say. Um, and as you start opening it up and flipping through it, you do see there's there's lots of photos of the blue bayou um, that kind of seem to be taken through like a telescopic lens from a distance about events that have taken place there. It shows a lot of your frequent customers just kind of coming and going to get an idea for who the crowd is there. Um, but the further you flip back in that folder, you you see things from your your upbringing you there's like a there's a picture of your grandmother in there there's information about where you grew up in Louisiana like there's again things that don't really seem pertinent to the present situation but that are just very personal um that are in this file in front of you uh Barry yours is by far the thickest of these files um inside your folder is every infraction the ones that were disclosed as well as the ones you thought no one knew about all lined up in a nice little excel spreadsheet with dates and amounts and partners involved um core your file is thick but for different reasons um if you flip through your file, you see a lot of the details about the parties that you used to throw, a lot of the events that you used to organize, um, not only the ones that were for your questionable clientele, but just the basic ones too. Um, uh, other events that you maybe had thrown at the Blue Bayou with Angel, um, lots and lots of information in that regard. There is a little bit of information um, about Ori and Warren, is that right? Her father, Warren. Yes, warned. Um, and about your sister and the accident that occurred therein. And um, so there's a little bit of background on you, some some flavor there. And um, <laughs> there is a candid still shot of you with a Molotov cocktail in your hand in the back alley, wearing that horrendous Lululemon legging set. And you just like chucking it with this look of ferocity on your face. And you think for half a second that, if it weren't for the Lululemon, this would be a really badass picture. Like, um, and again, just very strange personal details where you like to get your hair done, um, where, uh, where you typically hang out after work, like strange details about you and your life. Um, you all get the sense that this was just something that they whipped up in the last couple of hours. Um, about each of you. <clears throat> so Colonel Kellogg gives you a minute to flip through all of that. Um, and she kind of pauses, uh, waiting for questions to arise because of all of this information that she's forcing upon you. Barry kind of takes his file and scoots it away from everybody else as he's looking at it so that nobody could see potentially what is in there as he's leafing through it. Uh, Core takes out the, the Maltov cocktail picture and like folds that to put that in her pocket. <laughs> We've got copies, I assure you. Uh, this was just for me. I'm certain that you have copies. I mean, look at all the Get all the paper that you have on us. I mean, your your stalking skills are very adept. Well, it is our business to know what's happening here. Well, then what I'm wondering then, I, I mean, I get what you're telling us, telling us there's nowhere that we could hide, that there is nothing that you couldn't find out or that you might not already know. I mean, I can... I can feel the uncomfortable waves just coming off of Barry right now, alone. Well, he does have the most to hide of all of you. So I believe we're getting the message of what you're saying. What is it that you want from us? Because obviously you wouldn't go through this if you didn't want something pretty big. I do appreciate a woman who gets right to the point. We need help. Plain and simple. 
There's a meeting happening in approximately four hours with some very important members of the supernatural organization that runs Miami. Not like that feral beast that you encountered at the hotel. Something far more menacing. Something that plans. We believe that we've already been made by some of those in attendance, so we won't be able to advance on the building without being noticed. Um, but a group of four civilians might be able to get in, get the intel that we need, and get out without raising too many eyebrows. Are you saying you want us to go to a party and spy for you? I like to keep things simple. So something like that, yes. I mean, if anyone knows how to blend in in any kind of event, it would certainly be you, Cor. I mean, if anyone knows how to collect information without it being wanted, that would be you, Barry. And certainly Angel and Diego, the two of you are knowledgeable enough to pick up on the kind of information that we need. So truthfully, you all are ideal for this kind of assignment. What do we get out of it? Besides, of course, the continued existence of our loved ones, as we saw on your laptop. Oh, that's merely a tool to show you what the enemy might have. We, we would never hurt a child. You see no, I'm, I'm not very good at lying, and people are really good at lying to me, but even I know that's bullshit. I thought we were trying to keep things cordial here, but very well. All right. <clears throat> Barry, for your participation, we will expunge your criminal record and leave you blameless for all of the lives that you've left in your wake, all of the things that you've ruined, and all of the problems that you've caused for not only the people around you right now, but every other individual on your list that you've wronged. Do you understand me? I just, I just, I don't, it's... Uh... I don't know what she's talking about. It's um Angel, we're going to allow you to go ahead and handle that messy business that your grandmother charged you with. I actually believe that some of those in attendance of this meeting might take your personal interest, being that you are right down the street from La Palabra. Um Professor Diego, you and I have already discussed the terms of your participation here, but I do feel it necessary to remind you that you are on the verge of being a disgraced academic and therefore out on the street with very little to your name. And as for you, Cor, we'll help you to take back your business, to feel good about it again. After all, very few people have the body count that you truly do in this situation. I think you'd agree. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm in. My conscience would not be able to have it for me any other way. So does this mean that you guys will be doing cleanup in my establishment? You make things go away of this nature? Oh, that's already been handled. I, I also, too, don't understand why my grandmother is in these files. Where do you think your gifts came from? I'm aware of that, but you guys should be focusing on me. Not on someone who's passed. I think that we've struck a sore spot with you. My family is off limits. So be it. Help us with this. And for future assignments, we can renegotiate terms. Of course, we'll be paying everyone for their participation. We don't expect you to do this for free since you are risking life and limb. Um, should some accident occur, we will forward that payment on to your next of kin. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I am in. I, I'm not sure. I know, Core, you, you've already agreed, Barry and, and, and Angel. I'm, I'm assuming they've, they've backed us in a corner and that we're all essentially in. 
And I, I, I do appreciate the file that you have given us about each of us as a uh, as a very effective tactic to make sure to nudge us towards the end. Um, do you have information on who we're going to be up against? Yes, of course. But I can't disclose that until I know that this is a safe space, so to speak. Right. I'm sorry. I, uh, I guess there's a few of us that have not officially agreed yet. Barry. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm in. But um, just just to be clear, like, uh, this file's not, it's, um, yeah, I'm in, I'm in. Good. Wonderful. It looks like we're all on board then. So. There are those in Miami who make the big decisions. Not ones that can transform into beasts quite like you've seen so far, but they feed on humans and, um, well, I, I suppose the way they'd be presented easily to you all would be vampires. There's a lot that they can do. We don't fully understand the depth of their skill. It seems like some have abilities to disguise themselves and some move very quickly. We, we really don't have great information on the ones that we're tracking right now. What we do know is that the Olympia Theater is going to hold certain party members from this vampire persuasion this evening. There was some event that took place a few months back that has shaken their institution to its core. They're afraid right now. So they're willing to gather together in one place. Which means that not only can we gather information about exactly who is it that's making these decisions, but we can learn a little bit about maybe what they fear, maybe use it against them. To answer your question, Diego, the truth is that we don't know exactly who we're dealing with. We know that that there are vampires like Toby, who I believe you all encountered, who live in derelict buildings and feed when the opportunity crosses their path. But there are also those who make decisions about the human lives here in Miami. Those are the ones we want to find and terminate. When you say vampire. Yes. Like garlic and uh, crosses and, you know, like vampires. Our research shows that, uh, most of those methods don't appear to be useful. Honestly, how quickly um, Toby moved, I don't see what could be useful against that. How Does sunlight we... still work? <laughs> don't see them in the daytime very much. There are several newer converts, I suppose you could say, that don't seem to be bothered by it, but we do know that they don't like fire. Um, that seems to be fairly universal. Doesn't it depend on the vampire itself? Different things work for the, the depending on age, etc. Well, I sounds like you're already the expert, then, Angel. You don't really need my help, but um, well, you seem to already be aware that my grandmother equipped me with certain information, even though I didn't know, obviously, I would need it. Well, I think that'll serve you well in this situation. But the truth is that, like I said, we need you all to find that information for us. You might be dealing with the mayor, the chief of police, some high-ranking officials at different law firms. We, we truly don't know who is at the top of this pyramid making decisions, but that's what we need. 
I'm curious about something. Um, yes, Diego. So um, the uh, um, the werewolf yes. that you were apprehending had made mention of their pack being targeted. Are you who's targeting them, or is there a feud between these werewolves and vampires? Why why were they confronting each other at the Blue Bayou? They very much don't seem to get along. We don't know why. We know that you can't put them in a room together. We also know that 99% of the time, one of those creatures, those beasts with talons and fur will tear a blank body limb from limb. It's really an unfair fight. Sounds like an incredible weapon to use against them, does it not? Only if you can control it. I think I have an idea. I'm all ears. They're pack animals. The one in your possession right now is desperate for their pack that they are losing. I don't know if you're aware of how many remain or what's happened to the ones that have been lost, but my impression is that they are they need others like them. The conversation that we had earlier, maybe maybe it'll be helpful to mm, implement that sooner rather than later. And I could get to know this uh, <clears throat> one in your possession. What is everyone else's reaction to this conversation? I'm curious um, because I feel like even though Diego is trying very hard to be cryptic, it doesn't come out very cryptic. So um, I'm curious as to what Angel, Core, and Barry are thinking about this. Barry is only half listening. Um, you know, at this point, I think they've been around each other, what, 24 hours straight, just about. Mm -hmm. um, and in that time, he has realized that most of what comes out of the professor's mouth is more rambling than anything important. So he, he kind of just tunes him out um, because yeah. he is thinking about how to that mind control of the vampire and um, how on earth do you protect yourself against something like that? So he's okay. he's only part there all right core is looking intently at diego after after her her little um instinctual bump when she saw like how his back was straighter when he came in he seems more in his element seemed dismissive of uh clarice's life being lost and now he's being very academic uh about talking about this information where it's just like more and more core feels like he witnessed something that normally people should be horrified about but he's more than okay he's about to like try to fill out like a scientific log of of this and and um so she's like staring intently at diego and then looking over at um, uh, Colonel Kellogg, 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 um, there's something that seems to not be being said here, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the type to to just like you know mention the elephant or werewolf in the room, so to speak, but we had conversations with this person i her name escapes me right now but i mean this person was a human being that is also a werewolf you know turns into this bestial form you're you're speaking of and then there was clarice earlier who who was brought in with all of us and is um, suspiciously not here and no one's mentioning her name. It just seems like there's 
a lot of us versus them happening here, but that us them line is extremely blurry and it's everything's just collateral damage. I mean, Diego, are you are you are you really just it sounds like you're trying to argue to talk this person who's probably scared, alone, has been tortured in some way that we didn't see. We saw that she got shot. And you're just trying to manipulate her in some way so you can utilize her like, like a weapon, like she's not a being with feelings. She is a weapon. We're being utilized in the same way. It's our out. They're, they're giving us a chance to, to find a way out of the situation that we're in by using us. I have been used a lot and I didn't like it. And I am going to, I am going to do this and it won't be one time. It'd be as many times as it takes for my conscience to be clear. But what about what you're choosing to do now? What you're choosing to move forward with. This doesn't make things better, you realize, utilizing this person, this being, utilizing their animal aspects, you know, for your whims, that won't ever end well. And Cora is like petting Hades while uh, she's saying this. It's better than what they have now. The situation that they're in because of this agency. Yes, what I'm suggesting is a way out of it. And you expect that after they're attacking each other, that they won't just come after the humans, the prey. She didn't attack us. She had plenty of opportunities. But she, she attacked Perry. He was innocent. He was. He didn't do anything. He was His family by has that been thing. compensated for the loss more than they could ever truly hope. But don't you see that 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 she knows how to fight what we're up against? Don't you want to have someone else on our side potentially that's going to help us succeed, help keep us alive? Uh, Cora's going to step closer to Diego. What happened to Clarice, Diego? Uh, Diego turns to uh, to Kellogg. Uh, I no, don't look at her. I'm right here. It's not my place to say. I, I, I'm not in control here. What happened to Clarice, Diego? Clarice was confronted with an ugly truth when she was shown the world that you all already know about. She was unable to handle it and fell apart. As most mortals do when they're faced with the supernatural. You four are different. You four are stronger. There is nothing that we could have done to reintroduce her into a world that she no longer understood. So she served a greater purpose and she taught us something. What would that be? She taught us what an animal is capable of when it's trapped in a cage and goes into a blood frenzy. That's what she taught us. That information is going to save countless lives going forward. What, what, what does that mean? That's none of your concern. Your concern right now is whether or not you plan on handling this with us. That's truly your only decision right now. If you want to fight these creatures, we can give you tools to do so. I don't see any other way. I do want to fight these creatures. I never said I did not. I just wonder at methods. <sighs> Ends doesn't justify the means is what I'm saying. But yes, I want to fight. Any other questions, concerns about my seemingly moral ambiguity here? Wonderful. Come with me. Colonel Kellogg is going to exchange sort of a pointed glance um, with Robbie as they 
exit this holding chamber that you all have been in. And again, you all will sort of wind through these hallways filled uh, every 10 feet or so with another steel reinforced padlocked key coded door um, behind which you're positive there is another horror waiting to be discovered. Far worse than what you've seen so far. Um, and they come to, to a, a large, actually, freight elevator. Um, and Colonel Kellogg gestures inside and, and Robbie actually steps onto the platform waiting for the four of you. Sergeant Robbie is going to equip you with everything that you need, everything you feel like will be beneficial in this instance. Is there anything that you need from me? This will be the last time that we all speak. Um, yes, uh, uh, I imagine that this um, very tall, very strong looking, very um, militaristic person is going to offer us um, some uh, gadgets that I don't know how to use. Um, do you happen to have in your possession some um, objects that you've come upon in your excursions that might be of more interest to an academic mind. I think you'll find that we have some very interesting things within our um, vaults here. We've been at this for quite some time. And she's going to extend her hand to once again shake yours, um, Diego. I receive it immediately and shake it. You feel something in her palm. Um, and when you pull your hand back, there's a small red capsule. I'm sure you'll find that whatever tools we have to offer you are beneficial for this mission. I, um, not sure what the red capsule might mean. I, um, put it in my mouth and see what their expression might be. Uh, her her eyes kind of go wide for a second. I swallow it. Okay. Um, when she sees you swallow, she goes, well, um, you all should probably hurry then. Okay. And Sergeant Robbie is going to lower the grade on the freight elevator and you all feel yourselves going up. Okay. Um, was there any flavor to that? <laughs> you did not inspect that very closely. You just took a pill from a crazy military lady and swallowed it without asking a single question. And that, that is why wrong. I love Diego. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. an academic mind at work. We're gonna we're gonna test it and see what test happens. Test it and find out oh. and make an assumption. <laughs> Guys, I can't it. wait for next week. Um, oh my goodness! So the platform, <laughs> the freight elevator rises, and you can see uh, it's going to pass sort of one full floor and then stop on the one above it. So you've you've in total risen two stories at this point in time. Um, uh, Core, you were pretty heated leaving the holding cell. Are you sort of biting your tongue now, or is there anything that you want to address now that? Colonel Kellogg is no longer around. Uh, Cor, Cor will uh, be looking around at everybody, uh, looks at Diego again, and is just like, if you wash your hands in blood, they're still going to be bloody. Mm, I've never washed my hands in blood. I was trying to, you're a professor, you know metaphors. Mm. The figure of speech. Mm -hmm. Yes, the similes, all of that. And it seemed you were quite chummy with this person. So what, what, what's going on? Well, I mean, what do you want to know? I mean, I, 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 she, I, I was able to see the, um, um, the person that we had interacted with before in their um, full form still alive 
Um, and I'm just, I'm stuck here just as much as anybody else. And the life that I would have to go back to is not one that's going to remain intact for much longer. So I think that since we found ourselves here, my talents might be able to be utilized somewhere outside of the university where they might be appreciated a little bit more. I'm just saying, be careful, Diego. It's just... Never think that you aren't just as expendable as Clarice was. Just because they get more use out of you for a while doesn't mean it doesn't end that way. Sounds like we're just talking about the university still. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. If you guys want to come with me we can get you some tools i'm not gonna lie i'm really uncomfortable with this situation so i'd rather get away from it um but like weapons and core just like kind of (laughs) out um i and and marquia please tell me if i'm incorrect here so core strikes me as someone who is Quick to forgive, but long to forget. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I imagine that even though she is she is putting on her her core face and going back to being that sort of strong force in this group, she now views Diego with substantially more suspicion than she would have an hour ago. Yeah, definitely not the fluffy marshmallow um, academic that she thought that he was. Um, she's. She's more of, um, uh, yeah, there have been certain countries that have used academics in this way to disastrous results. Yes. She's wondering if she's seeing this in motion right now. Wonderful. Um, How does Angel feel about this sort of shift with the professor? She's trying to analyze because she's, she's, also to paying attention to Diego's what he's saying and his body language, which has changed from before, mm-hmm. kind of like what Core noticed, but also to just the fact that he was willing to kind of say that he feels like they should just have at one another, but didn't see that there could be a, a, a kind of a backfire to that plan. And just that it was just kind of like a, you know, a nonchalant response to it when she's kind of, uh, already has that whole like if somebody is helpless you you help the people who can't help themselves kind of attitude especially because with perry uh what happened it's still with her and she still hasn't forgotten it so she's she's kind of uh keeping an eye on obviously he's now the wild card in this situation when they go uh, to wherever it's they're supposed to go for this event okay Barry, how are you feeling? Well, one, Barry is very intrigued about um, all of them opening the doors to whatever technology and and, uh, weapons that are available. So he's he's thinking hard about that for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, And the professor's new found drive, it appears, Barry doesn't really have a problem with it. Uh, as far as like, sure, yeah, use the tools at your at your disposal. That that seems natural to to Barry. And the human life equation doesn't really fall into it. So maybe a little bit more respect for the professor's uh, point of view, and a little bit more kindred kinship towards him um, as as he's walking down the hall and just like, okay, all right. There's a little bit more to the professor, and um, I dig it. But he he stays quiet during this this altercation. Probably smart for for Barry's sakes. Probably smart. So, as you exit the the freight elevator, the space in which you now are is a stark differentiation from whence you came um where below you the ceilings had been sort of low and again all the lighting was fluorescent it very much felt like a prison 
But now walking out of this freight elevator, the room feels very much um, core and uh, angel. You you might almost feel like you're walking into like a luxury bespoke sort of shop. Um, if this shop happened to specialize in all kinds of deadly weaponry and technology, um, there's uh, lining lining every wall on every countertop in every glass display case here. And this room is pretty big. It's probably, you know, 50 feet from one side to the other and another 50 feet wide. Um, there are guns and tasers and and knives and explosives there's any kind of weapon you could possibly desire there are racks of tactical clothing there are racks of like high end uh evening wear there there every possible tool you could ever need for any kind of job is here and in the center of this room on a table um core your fanny pack is there um you know, the, the bag of books is sitting there. Everybody's cell phones and watches are sitting there, along with Baby Shark, which we didn't describe before, but that is Barry's drone. Um, it sort of has a grayish tone to the top and a, a white underbelly from whence it gets its name. Um, but Barry, your drone has been brought here as well. And maybe you think back to when it wasn't responding to you back at the DuPont building, um, realizing that they might have found it or known it was there before you realized you needed it um, and had apprehended Baby Shark. So in this room of endless possibilities, of endless possible gear, um, Robbie is going to sort of set you loose with the express uh, direction of you will be going to the Olympia Theater, which is uh, a beautiful venue um, in downtown Miami, um, where a lot of arts fundraising um, get-togethers take place. Corey, you've actually probably arranged several of them. Um, and Robbie informs you that it is a similar event that you all will be attending this evening. Um, those in attendance might not all be under the influence of something supernatural, but they are all to be suspect in this. Your goal is to find out who among these high-ranking officials is truly pulling the strings, the strings, and maybe where to find them. Set loose in this wonderland of really cool shit, um, let's start with Barry. Barry, this is like Disneyland to you. Tell me what you're looking for. Tell me what you're doing. Well, first, Barry rushes across the room to uh, his phone and watch. And then he sees Baby Shark and he rushes over there. Um, and he kind of like grabs it in a in a like possessive hug. But then he looks back at Core. And, and he's like, oh, <clears throat> I'm just happy that it's safe. It's not an emotional support thing at all. It's a comfort device. It's I'm so impressed of how you take care of your mental well-being. That's not what this It's It's really. And he just trails off into sputtering. Um, but then then he starts looking at all of the guns and different mounting accessories. And um, he makes his way to a cabinet that has some exceptionally deadly looking um, compact weaponry. Um, and he starts doing some like eyeball measuring and then looks around for some, some screwdrivers and, and ratchets. And um, he looks at Robbie in like a kind of a questioning, like Robbie kind of like nods his head towards um, it. It looks like a countertop, but it has almost like those printmaker shelves in it that you could tell could hold a lot of tools. Mm -hmm. So he sort of nods in that direction at you. So he, he grabs um, <clears throat> a, uh, a full automatic machine gun um, kind of, you know, maybe, maybe about here 
um, a submachine gun style and um, rushes across to the workbench, pulls out some like glasses and a soldering iron and starts going to town with various equipment being installed directly onto baby shark. Okay. So to be clear, you are attaching an automatic weapon to your drone. That's correct. Um, this goes hand in hand with my perk armaments. Yes. Um, that's right. I have an auto controlled drone with a machine gun on it. Watch out. Barry's packing heat. Spectacular. Um, anything else you're searching for? Um, I would, I would definitely f- try to find some sort of data bank to download um, additional information specifically about uh, the venue. Um, so using my global access to attempt to get building schematics, security information, um, any sort of um, security modifications up to including physical, electronic surveillance, cameras, door sensors, the whole the whole kit and caboodle. So there's there is a bank of computers in this room that look to be available for like use, but when you move to go and get to them, Robbie actually stands in your way and hands you a flash drive instead. Um he just kind of like looks at you knowingly and says, "Wouldn't want you to find any information that might get you in trouble." Barry's going to look as innocent as possible. <laughs> Roll me manipulation and performance. I think those are good for him. That is one success. Okay. Um, yeah, you are not fooling him. He's sort of like spins you by the shoulder back to the table and gives you a little shove in that direction. That's fair. Anything else? Nope. Uh, information and drones. That's, that's his, his goal here. Okay. Um, let's go to, let's go to core next. Core, what would you be searching for? Um, obviously you've got your fanny pack there. I'm sure that your little ceramic Buddha flask is starting to look real good right about this time. Uh-huh. Um, what is core up to? Uh, well, uh, core knows, uh, that they're going to be going to, uh, Olympia theater. Is this a black tie, uh, event? Yes. Okay. Um, well then first things first, before she goes into the room, she would, uh, get on the phone uh, with her, well, with her uh, personal assistant, Marguerite, uh, I think, is that her personal assistant? Correct. Yeah. Uh, Marguerite, uh, to arrange for someone to pick up her niece from school, because it doesn't look like she's going to make it to. When you look at your phone, Um, Keep in mind, you all were unconscious that it was very, very hard to tell how much time had passed when you were below in the holding tanks. Um, When you look at your phone, it's seven o'clock at night. Oh, no. And you did promise Ori that you were going to pick her up. So picking up your phone, you've got a bunch of missed calls. There's some frantic text messages, even some from Warrant that are like, hey, are you okay? We haven't heard from you. What's up? Uh, Cora is going to have to call. Um, going to have to call them and let them know that uh, she's that she's okay. okay. <laughs> The, the phone will ring for a couple of extra rings, it feels like. It feels like it takes them a really long time to pull up or to pick up. Um, and then you hear Warren's unmistakable voice. Um, where have you been? Um, it was it was completely out of my control. Um, I, I And then I didn't have access to my phone. And then where I was located. It's just, there was no cell reception. Court, after, after what happened with Janie, how could you, how could you do that to Ori? 
I didn't, I didn't mean, I didn't mean for it to, to happen this way. I, She's been in tears all afternoon asking me where you were, what happened to you? It, I understand. And I, I didn't want you to worry. I really didn't. It, it, it literally was just work got in the way and in a very big way. And I, and I wasn't able to, to dial out um, because of, cell reception and I'm only now being able to get to my phone now and I'm so incredibly sorry it look you're gonna have to find some way to make this up to her I'll I'll let her know that you're okay but I don't really think she wants to talk to you right now uh I I gotta go I have I have an event that I need to to worry about so I'll we'll give you a call tomorrow okay yeah, I, I'll 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 make make it up with like cooking dinner um for for everyone you know I I I'll I will make this up to her and and to you as yeah, well. well. We'll see. Um, and he just kind of hangs up. Ugh. I uh, just pets Hades like oh. Ugh. And, and then he just kind of nuzzles you just like a little a little harder than he had been knowing that that you're upset right now yeah like uh, why do i have a feeling that there's going to be more calls like that in the future hades uh next up core is going to uh connect with marguerite because uh for this event at olympia theater they're you know have to get herself plus three plus hades um into the event so to go ahead and have Marguerite uh, streamline that Excellent. to get us on the list and get us in VIP as high as possible at this amount of notice. Uh, for that. M- Marguerite, she has paid enough that she will take your request without complaint and will fulfill it to the best of her abilities. Um I would like you to go ahead and roll me your um ooh, roll me your contacts yeah. and charisma to try and make this seem like a natural request instead of a really fucking weird one. Okay, cool enough. Um would resources be a, be like a So resources is kind of just going to be your cash on hand sort of thing, unless you're offering to pay her extra, just like as an aside, like, and we'll give you a tip for doing this on such quick notice, like that kind of thing. uh, Resources aren't going to come into play. Okay. Um, That would be an extra dice on the roll, but I feel like this is part of her job and I'm just for the principle of it. I'm going to, I'm going to. You're not going to let her get away with questioning it. Yeah, charisma and contacts. She's paid very well. We have a very good business relationship. <laughs> so I'm gonna make I'm gonna make that. Yeah, this is this is what she does. Hard to get uh, expensive. I'm request. positive it's not the weirdest request you've made of Marguerite, but it's probably the weirdest one you've made. Like the night of when she knows you aren't working an event. Yeah, yeah, that I'm actually going to one. Yeah. I have a feeling that Core doesn't really go much to other people's events. She plans them exactly. and she spends time with her family. Yeah. So. And oh, looks like I'm on the money with this. One, two, three, four, five. One is a crit. Okay. Uh you hear like the very briefest moment of hesitation in Marguerite's voice. And then she's like, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and make the call for you. I'll forward you the information to your cell phone so that you don't have to worry about it. Have a great time. And then she hangs up. Okay. Um, with that set aside, then Core is, she has a couple of things that she's, she's going to do here. Um, her first thought is Hades has to be decked out uh, for this event. Um, but he has to be safe. So she's going to utilizing uh, improvised gear. Oh my God. Which I, she's going to go into the evening where things find, you know, the smallest tuxedo there. Uh, she's going to 
go to like the smallest Kevlar type of uh, harness or arrangement that they have. I'm sure they have like a canine section or something like that. She's going to improvise gear uh, tuxedo onto like this Kevlar thing and make uh, Hades into like a battle cat. I am so into this. I can't even uh, d- describe it. Go ahead and, and make me your improvised gear uh, edge pool roll of intelligence and craft. Okay. Uh, with this, um, I, I am going to be using utilizing my specialty, uh, disguising weaponry uh, with craft uh, and also my perk specialization. So if I get this, that it'll be a uh, three dice advantage instead of two. Mm-hmm. Okay, so intelligence craft with my specialty of... uh... Which we'll say for the case of specialization and this particular item, it'll be three bonus dice to Hades athletics and dex rolls to avoid getting hurt. Does that sound good to you? Okay, yeah, that would if this uh, goes three. Goes, Goes three, goes through. All right. So, okay. This is the edge. It's a four to have to get over. Okay. Um, I want to use a willpower to re-roll three of these dice. Okay. She wants it to be good. She wants this kitty Kevlar tuxedo to be amazing. I need it to be. And it has to be better. It has to be better than than two successes. So that's why I'm re-rolling these. These three. Okay. Three successes. So. You're able to find a, a... Kevlar vest that's small enough, but there's not really a great option for a tuxedo. Like he's a 35 pound cat. There's not anything that's awesome here. Um, The best that you're going to be able to do is sort of like crafting him a little bit of like a a scarf moo moo sort of get up. So it's not really going to be black tie. Okay. That's fine. A a sparkly scarf, you know? Yeah. People, people allow cats to get away with all sorts of things. because He might be a fashion faux pas, but um, <laughs> the, the spirit is there. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll do that. I also want to sew in a little GPS tracker um, okay. into, into his vest. Um, preferably, you know, like with Alien, where she's Ripley's looking for Newt. And it's like, as she gets closer you know, It'll like be- that, but in a in a watch form. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm good with that. Um, I'm gonna have you roll me your uh, intelligence, and do you have anything in technology? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have you roll me another intelligence and craft. This one isn't necessarily your edge pull. It's literally just seeing if you can reasonably get this this little tracker chip somewhere on this moo moo for Hades that isn't stupid obvious like to sew it in <laughs> yeah okay to make it look decorative instead of functional we'll put it that way right uh one two three three again so spectacular yeah so that is enough you make it look like Hades sort of is reviving Roman fashion. It's very much like a, a toga kind of appearance. And this tracker chip is actually built in sort of like a nice clasp right up on the shoulder. It, it's very dramatic. Um, and you, you feel like this is some of your finest work, honestly. Um, and uh, Sergeant Robbie is going to show you how you can actually go ahead and use your, your Apple watch to do that tracking so that you don't have to wear two separate devices and look like an absolute crazy person um, going to this event. Okay, great. Uh, eventually, she'll probably ask Barry if there's a possibility to utilize some of his stuff to like GoPro uh, Hades so that we can also see what he's up to. Barry? Um. Barry is immediately excited about this idea. 
um, he he starts rambling about drones and then the cat is a drone. Oh my God. I didn't even think about this. We could arm all the animals in the city. We are not, we're not putting a weapon on what? We're not putting a weapon on Hades. Oh, 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 just, just surveillance then. Uh, Surveillance. And it would be great if I could talk to him, you know, like uh, every now and again, he likes to hear my voice. Like he'll go off and do his thing or I might be able to send him in a direction, but to be able to be like, Hades, come back. That would be awesome. That's doable. But what do you think about how well can, what if we put um, we're, plastic explosives? No. No. Oh. no. I just thought maybe he could get into a duct and like put it there. No, we don't want no. that. Okay. No. All right. Um, we're not. What? Just no. thought, just going to kind of like lean over. Uh, you're, you're just gathering intel. I'm just carry on. I like to be prepared. With explosives? Why not? Well, then how about you put explosives on Baby Shark? And see I how did. That goes. You put explosives on your comfort device. Well, I it's got a gun now. That's that's kind of really cool, actually. I thought so, right? So K- Hades with a gun, right? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. No. All right. Um uh, yeah, give me, give me, give me a second. Um, and so he's going to start grabbing random, appearing, seeming random bits and bobs from different shelves. And um, like he grabs a, a full size. Um, wow, I almost said camcorder. Let me, let me dial that back and and <laughs> age in yourself, yeah, buddy. Um, <clears throat> oof. Uh, grabs a, a digital camera um, that is. Uh, possibly a little larger and he like smashes it and starts pulling out pieces of it. Um, and he is going to attempt to affix a, um, camera, but more like a, um, you know, the flexible, um, not a GoPro that will look like Hades has a camera on his head, but a, a flexible, um, laser. Why I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the, you know, the thing that they like, Send I don't into think pipes. Actual thing exists. No, it is like it the ones that they use for endoscopies. I mean, well, yeah, but not <laughs> like the the little LED cameras or I forget. Anyway, Do you just want maybe a nanny cam. No, that? no, 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 no. Okay, so they use them a lot in the military to scope around corners and go into tight places. It's a little oh, okay. tiny all right, camera, all right, all right. All right. Um, but it's not like a Gro- GoPro. It's on a flexible wand. So I'm gonna attach that to a collar with a speaker and a, um, a recording device. So we can both hear and talk to Hades and see what Hades is looking at. All right. Battle cat. Battle cat. Core, I would like for you to roll me your um, intelligence and craft. And uh, Barry, I'm going to have you roll me intelligence and technology. Okay. Guys. Hades is going to be the only one prepared. No, it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> I'm still going to have like a weapon and like an incinerary device and Please stuff. Please tell me there's a theme like, song. Battle cat, battle cat. <laughs> um, I got four successes, but I kind of want to spend a willpower. Do it. I'm going to spend a four. willpower and re-roll three of these. I got four successes, but one of them's a crit. Okay. Okay, that gives me a second crit, so that jumps it up to eight successes. Right? So I have one, two, three successes and two crits, so a total of five. So then it's so seven be, successes. Okay, um, seven successes. Either way, it's a, it's a lot. Um, so the <laughs> Angel and, uh, and, and Diego, what you kind of see is... Um, Hades is standing there now wearing a cat toga and <laughs> and Barry sort I oh man words I never thought would leave my mouth Barry sort of like is running around frantically just grabbing things off of the shelves and this is the first time you've seen him like really excited about something um but he seems so jazzed right now and he runs back over to where where Hades is and is sort of like is blocking your field of vision with his body and every once in a while you see core reach in and she goes no that shouldn't go there that doesn't look right um and yeah, they both, nothing can go wrong 
yeah, nothing. nothing. They they both step back to admire their handiwork. And by the time that they are both satisfied, um, Hades, who appropriately now wearing a toga, also has a silver laurel that has been affixed with this camera, along with a little microphone and a little speaker, um, so that he can remain in constant contact with his mama. Um, Hades really looks like Hades right now. It's very appropriate. Um, this is my proudest moment as a storyteller. I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, okay, okay, core one. We could put an electronic defense system on uh, like, like a taser type thing, you know, like a, like an electric fence. So if somebody touches him, oh, what do you think about that? Well, it, but when that shock him as well. No, 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 no. We put it out as outward directing. So it's like an electric fence, but it's on these nodes. So it sits right off his body. So if anybody touches him, they get a shock. On the one hand, I love it. But on the other, how would that fit with the toga and the laurel? I mean, Halo? it has to look a certain way. I feel like this should be a work in progress. Okay, we'll, like we'll circle other, back. But one other, last time. one Just one last attempt. Plastic no explosives. plastic explosives. Okay, all right. Although I, I, will, I will consider the, the electric shock so that that could help for him to get away. Okay, so we'll work on the taser claws later. Taser claws? That sounds actually... Hey, Dees, what do you think about that? Do you like to taser someone with your claws? <laughs> that one will require body modifications. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's so bloodthirsty. He's adorable. Uh, Cora is actually going to deck herself out now with the, the basics um uh, incinerary uh device that she could like um put in like her fanny pack uh ceramic gun okay yeah i i would assume the military would uh have that she she'd get a she'd probably get their nicest um black tie biz, business like tuxedo like thing um, and she'd pair that with uh, a silky blouse, um, like the feminine touch, like underneath it type okay. of thing. Uh, but ceramic gun uh, in the back. Whatever they have for dual, like collapsible batons would be great. Okay. Um, because that's easy to also put on one's body. Uh, and then in, in deference to the supernatural that um, we've been talking about, like this entire time, um, is there the, the ceramic gun, could it have rounds in it that would explode on impact for vampires or be like really bad for them? Um, I think it's reasonable that you would have access to incendiary rounds. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this is this is a, a spying fact mission, not an all out assault. So ceramic gun with the incinerary rounds, the dual collapsible batons um, and some sort of incinerary um, makings for her fanny pack. OK, um, the the dual batons are actually really uh, can they can she disguise them as like hair assessment that's what i was thinking actually is it sort of like it it corresponds just a little bit with what hades has going on like you aren't going full greco-roman ensemble mm -hmm. but you almost they sort of curve around and have this leaflet design on the side but they they look like like hair chopsticks um but yes all of that is within reason you are able to find it with relative ease in this room um which actually shocks you because you thought it would be super hard to find hair stick batons um and you know equipment for your cat but you know government stocked i guess um wonderful anything else that core wanted for this event uh, i think uh core's good she has her fanny pack back which already has some stuff in it yeah, it's got her sewing kit and like some aspirin yeah, um, you know the base, a tissue, um, <laughs> tie pin, a drill, like a nappy pin. pin, just in case, uh, um, a lighter, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and hairspray. Just I'm throwing it out there. Um, okay. 
Wonderful. Uh, let's go to, we're, we're going to end with you, Diego. I'm sorry. You've been so patient this whole time. Um, let's go to Angel. Angel, what would you be grabbing to prepare yourself for uh, this, this gala at the Olympia Theater? Um, well, first she's going to try to check for her phone to make sure that um, Blue Bayou isn't uh, going, basically just that it's being run uh, by the, poor Jade, who was probably left with uh, not knowing where she was. Uh, you you pick up your phone um, and you do have messages from both Marcos and Jade. And you're like bracing yourself as you open those text threads, expecting to see like, what the fuck happened here? Like, are you okay? And all kinds of concern. Um, it looks as though a reply was actually sent to Marcos um, after he sent the text message of the police are on their way. Um, it looks that, like there was a reply sent that said, they came by, everything's fine. Thanks so much for checking up on me. As if you sent it, but you had not sent that. Um, as far as, uh, the text messages since then, Marcos kind of says, Hey, hope you're doing okay. Jade and I have the place covered. So if you're not feeling well, we've got everything under control for today. And then Jade's is just like, there's a couple questions about who was supposed to be working, um, this, this next day following the memorial service at Blue Bayou and just general management questions. But it leads you to believe that when they arrived at the Blue Bayou, everything was cleaned up. She probably will then, um, she will send um, messages to both of them, probably like, because I'm sure there's a, like a, probably like a group chat, especially with those two, because of mm -hmm. the fact that she relies on them uh, yeah. probably more than any of the other employees, because they're tried and true. Uh, uh, and so she's going to basically say, um, um, sorry, um, my phone died. Um, I'm in the middle of um, some very important business meetings. Uh, thanks for holding down the fort. Um, give like give me reports um, a little bit later on how everything's going, and then send it. Okay. And then um, after that, she will of course head over first to wardrobe because that's that's going to be the priority for most important, for, part most of important this thing. Really is the yes. Um, because, you know, if things go down poorly, at least she's going to die looking glamorous. So uh, she's going to try to look because of the fact that in in Angel's fashion, she loves uh, anything that's like also to reads Miami. So she's looking for a yellow, like fitted evening gown, um, something really bright and lively. So if she sees something in yellow, um, she's going to kind of pull that um, off the off the um, hanger and then she's going to look, okay, is there for, um, I know that there's a specific armor and things like that, but I do know that there is, it does exist where it's almost like, it looks like shapewear, but it's like basically like, it's like the corset, but it's a actually, Kevlar corset. it's basically, yeah. Like it's basically a, like body armor. You but know, if anyone has it, it's the IAO. Yes. <laughs> so she's trying to go for that uh, that uh, looks like a corset and just regular, you know, body shapewear. But it's actually just in case, um, you know, uh, she takes some damage, doesn't know what's going to happen. So she's like wants to be prepared uh, to put underneath that so it's sleek and it works. Um, she will look for uh, because at least um, and please tell me if I'm wrong depending on the vampire some vampires are sensitive to silver still you wouldn't know that i mean you you might suspect reading, it you might you might be like i don't you know i hear that silver's like a folkloric bane i know that i know that some people don't like it i know that it works against guru but you don't know okay i was going off of like in the books like, I mean, some of the possibly. books probably say that. Some of the books okay. probably say silver is useless. Okay, so she's going to try to look. Ton of research done. Okay, she's going to try to look for um, <laughs> possibly like a, some type of jewelry, like a like something that would be not obvious. Like maybe it's like um, if it's uh, silver on the inside, but it has jewels or something like some type of uh, jewelry bracelet or something that she could kind of just wear, and it looks like it's just a part of the ensemble. Okay. Um, trying to, to do that. Um, is there anything as far as, um, I know that sometimes they have the, the, um, 
I don't want to say the Bond type gadgets where it's like, it looks like lipstick and it's actually something else. I don't know that you would get that lucky in this case. You, It's easy enough to find some silver jewelry over with all of the clothes. Um, you know, you find two like big chunky sort of uh, bracelets, like cuff style that you mm-hmm. think would be really useful. Um, but you don't have Q on your side here. Robbie's your guy and he's not gonna put anything in lipstick yeah i had to i had to check because you know i mean government 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 agency you know we don't know what they're you know they could be balling in here um which it seems like they apparently are but just not to that degree um not as well funded as um in my six so um (laughs) way to rub it in geez (laughs) um let's see uh she's going to actually take a look really quickly at through the books that um, basically uh, she was so scared that she lost because she knew Diego would probably lose it. Uh, she's going to take a look at those books really quickly. Okay. Is she looking for anything in particular? Um, she's going to specifically try to see if there were notes um, on uh, possibly on vampires in, in some of these um, or like the lore or history. Um, and, uh, you know, because I, I don't think we went through every book that he gave me. Mm -hmm. Um, so kind of also to doing that whole thing where she's going to attempt because she's like, I, I guess this is, you know, it, it sort of worked where some things came to mind. She's going to try to see if she gets any vibes, any sense as she goes through them quickly, kind of just seeing the notes on the, um, the corners and wherever else they may be. Roll me your wits and occult. All right. These were the books from Diego's library. Yeah, there were, I believe, four books he gave me. Correct me if I'm wrong, but. Oh, okay. So that's uh, four successes. Okay. Um, Looking through these uh, books, a lot of the notes in the margins are kind of nonsensical to you. A lot of them are in like that professor shorthand that's almost as bad as doctor handwriting. Like you you can pick out a word every once in a while, but it isn't super clear. Um, after a while, you start getting distracted by some of the pictures um, in these books because the context with the lens with which you're now viewing them is far more brutal than had originally been thought. Um, it shows some some historical depictions of like, um, you know, the the gladiators in in the the Roman arena with lions. But now looking at it, the lions don't really look like lions. They look like something else. Um, looking at some of these etchings from like the the Civil War, um, like you're you're viewing these pictures now with the mindset of oh my God, everyone is a monster. Um, And some of the notes are very unsettling in that it's like aged 1000 years. And it'll it'll be strange things like that that are just so nonsensical. Um, Your mind cannot reconcile the information into something useful. Okay. Um, after kind of um, looking through those, um, she's going to probably grab a pair of shoes as well, obviously, to complete the, the look. Is there anything um, as far as oh, I know that there's weaponry, but because of the fact that you know, this was just supposed to be like we were going in and she's not that uh, skilled with weapons per se. But is there anything as far as um, warding or like any anything that could be like for vamp like typical vampire things that she could take a look at not necessarily that she's gonna she just wants to know what's there i mean you you glancing around this space there is a lot to behold um some of the items here don't really make sense from a tactical viewpoint mm-hmm. uh there are some things like there's there's a very old looking box with some numbers and figures etched in it that um, I feel like Diego is probably pretty Mm -hmm. interested in from the get-go because it looks really old and that's sort of his jam. Um, There's a small selection of knives and things like that, but the one piece of of lore that you, that really sticks in your mind, um, we'll say, uh, I feel like... uh, you were probably super into Buffy 
Um, so the imagery of just like a steak in general is very appealing to you. Um, and glancing around this room, there is a small selection of like, I don't want to say canes, but like walking stick style accessories um, hmm. that could very easily puncture someone's heart were they applied with enough force. She's going to try to see if there's one that looks like it would possibly go along with the outfit that she put together. Um, she will try to, because um, she's matchy matchy, she has to make sure that it looks good. Oh, yeah. So um, she's going to definitely probably take whatever one is like going to match the jewelry or you know, kind of that vibe. So there's there's one you you have you found this sort of like yellow orange gown. Would you wear a dress or would you wear it like a pantsuit? So it's a, in my head I imagine that it's like this yellow um kind of uh like she likes things with capes like are kind of like that flowy at the okay. top but fitted like in the body to like show her curves. Like a mermaid style dress. Mermaid yeah, okay. to show the curves. Yeah. Cool. So you have kind of this like yellow orange style like mermaid dress with this little like asymmetrical cape so it sort of gleans off one shoulder a little bit um and there's a cane with some like uh it has some silver foil work in the shape of leaves that very much matches the two bangles that you found um and then has a hand painted gold leaf design going all the way down the actual uh cane part itself so that coordinates pretty well mm -hmm. yeah she'll definitely take that as well okay anything else you're looking for um i believe that that for her is it because she does she's not as uh skilled as the other two as far as uh what the, the battle cat the animals the yeah. battle cat <laughs> situation <laughs> she's um, just also too observing like while she's going around she's just still kind of like kind of impressed but then very confused because now this cat is just like ready to go to war. And Hades she's... is all about it. He's into it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's great. I'm a big fan of Battle Cat. I also like to think that Angel probably recognizing that both Barry and Diego are hopeless, um, probably eyed them up for tuck size mm -hmm. and picked mm -hmm. out some stuff off the rack yeah. for them. Oh, she's going to look around really quickly for earpieces. Communication. Something so they can communicate. Okay. For ev for every yeah. for the entire group. Yeah. Easily enough found. Diego. I think the first thing he's uh, uh, saying as, as we're in this room with all this like equipment, he's drawn to uh, interestingly enough clocks where there looks like there's some like old stuff and clocks where like the books are because that's what you would normally take his attention. But he sees all the like protective gear walks over to it and he looks at himself and he like pokes himself a little bit and he says puffy marshmallow huh <laughs> gets a a vest so he gets a, a um like a kevlar vest um and doesn't really know how to put it on like doesn't know how to strap it together but just like puts it on kind of and then thinks that that's probably enough um robbie robbie's standing a few feet away and he like nods when you get one of the straps right and then shakes his head when you try and do one that's like not quite right yeah um, just to try and offer a little bit of silent assistance um uh and then I, you know think i have it right um and i start to walk over to those old looking things um not looking for weapons right now or anything but i'm looking around for something i know that we're dealing with the supernatural i know we're dealing with vampires and i know based on things that i've read and now that i'm looking back at the research that i've done before in a in a with with new eyes um i uh am looking for any kind of artifact that gives me the impression that it has some sort of protection to it okay You have a unique vantage point looking at all of this stuff. Um, you've read so many texts. You've, you've now put together so many historical puzzle pieces for, uh, you know, different 
different worldwide events that now have sort of a supernatural flair to them that looking over these artifacts um, and, and these weapons and everything sitting in front of you, it, it makes sense right now. And so you find yourself on, looking at one particular shelf that seems to have some very old things on it. There's a small glass vial um, there that, that draws your attention. There's the box that has some symbols carved on it that if you flip open the lid, um, it actually has like one of those, um, you see a lot of them in in fake pieces of, of media, but like the shrunken head um, that has its mouth stitched shut that's been mummified. Um, you get the sense that's probably not incognito enough for this particular operation, but you plan to come back and ask Robbie about it because that seems really useful. Yeah. Um, you know, there are obviously a whole bunch of knives from, from ancient Rome, from Babylonia, from Egypt, from, um, you know, feudal Japan, from all of these different places that you get the sense are touched in some way. And looking at this wide array of things that hold value, hold power, hold energy, the one that you choose to pick up is the small vial. It feels warm in your palm as you pick it up. Hmm. And do I get a sense that it's, uh, the liquid inside of it is what has the property or like the, the like vial itself as well? The vial looks pretty plain. You get the sense that it's the liquid inside. Um, and Robbie, again, still kind of observing you. He's not really sure about you. Uh, we'll just kind of go, huh. That's an odd choice. Did you uh, know that was holy water? Uh, well, I mean, I, I suppose it makes sense that it would be. Um, so uh, a good choice then, considering what we're up against. And I put it in my pocket. Okay. Um. Is there anything, anything else that I can take? Those knives are interesting, and I, 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 what I would do is take them and distribute them to everybody if I got a sense of something in them, if that is allowed. So the hard part about this is the fact that you are going to a black tie affair um, at a very auspicious location oh, so right. there's probably going to be some measure of security there so um i like to think that diego probably got an armful of these knives and Absolutely. he like walked around and handed them to people yes and then he got to core who was like darling we're going to a party oh right um i'm gonna then go back and collect them <laughs> and put them back um and uh, the last thing I'm going to look for is, you know, as I started to see, there's two two things. I, I, I At this point, knowing that I got this wrong, I'm going to look at my companions and see what they're drawn to. Mm -hmm. And I'm noticing them being drawn to the clothes, the jewelry, the weapons, but I don't really want anything to do. I, I, don't, I don't even want to play with that. Um, and then I'm looking at the cat and I'm like, poor cat. Um, uh, I certainly don't want that done to me, whatever they're doing to them. Uh, to Hades, um, but the jewelry, and then I get this idea, oh, maybe there's something of that nature here in these old objects. If there's like an amulet or anything that jumps out at me, I would, or even just a cruise, like a cross, anything, uh, 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 anything of that sort. If, if I find something cool, um, if not, then I'm going to move on to the next thing. You, you, do find a crucifix that's um, oddly ornate. Uh, it, it feels old. It feels significant in some way um, that you're just sort of drawn to um, that you can pick up and put on. I will you do exactly it. that. Okay. I pick it up, I put it on, and then I kind of hold on to it for a little while and uh, just kind of, I don't know, let it, kind of connect to it okay 
And I think it's probably at this point that I see uh, uh, Angel kind of going through the books and I will um, join Angel and ask, what do you, what is it that you, what is it that you're looking for? I, I figured, you, I mean, you gave it to me earlier to try to get a sense or, or try to figure out, um, I, I guess, what it means, uh, a lot of the notes and, and such, but I, I really can't make much out of it myself. Well, let, let, let me see what I can do. And I'm going to try to use, um, uh, I, I want to look up how to hurt them. Okay. My um, book. Yeah. So... Uh, roll me your resolve in academics. And I would like to use a desperation die. Okay. You get to use both of them because currently we're at desperation level two. Uh, just remember, every mm-hmm. failure you have there is going to be disastrous. Every failure. Every okay. failure on a desperation die. Okay. And uh, the failure is the one? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm rolling so many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, uh, Here it goes. Luis, I just sent you 15 dice. You can't run out of dice. No, I I, I have them all. I was like, I, I wanted to... I was trying to find um, a better thing to roll on, but this was, this will do. Uh, I don't have any failures. Okay, that's a good start. Very good. Um, I have one, two, three, four, five successes and one crit. So six successes, one of them being a crit. Okay. You flip through the book. Um, getting to a section about, um, because these are historical texts, you, you get to a section about, uh, the Salem witch trials and about the, uh, burnings at the stake that took place. And you're, you're gleaning some subtext there about the uses of fire, um, and how seemingly the text makes it sound like that's how you take care of the supernatural period. Fire cleanses fire clean and right as you're sort of like gleaning that knowledge robbie comes over and slams the book shut in front of you come on guys we don't have time for research we gotta go we gotta go now okay we need uh uh uh, yes uh uh uh, got that but fire everybody fire cleans that's what they're weak against anything that you can light on fire uh please don't light anything on fire you're Uh. going to a theater well, oh. sometimes you have to. It just happens. Well, it, we're going to need to, in case things get bad, it, we're going to get some information that's going to be critical. And if they find out that we're there under those circumstances, they might well, come after us. don't let them find out. Well, it's not about us surviving. It's about the information surviving. What? Let's go. That's what they're interested in. You could put a flamethrower on Hades. No, let's go. Putting a weapon on Hades. I proceed. (laughs) Um, I thought of one more thing real quick. Is there um, a universal cable thing that I can just grab? Yes. Okay, cool. That's probably, I feel like that's probably something that Barry has on his person at all times. So if anything, you were just given back the one that you probably had with you to begin with. Okay. you all are directed to like a big black suburban van um, where you're sort of piled in the back and uh, Robbie gets in the passenger seat and he says, sorry guys, but we kind of got to do it this way. And he hands four black bags back to whoever is in the second row there. Come on. Um, is, is baby shark with us or yes baby shark is with you okay he is in the suburban with you so this is supposed to you know i guess is that that's what you're suggesting yes okay that's 
And then he, he puts it on. He keeps talking with she's, it. Back An- Angel's going to ask for a bigger bag because she's going to point at her hair. Uh, Robbie <clears> just <throat> kind of stares at you in response. Uh, bigger bag? No. no. <sighs> of course. And then she's like reluctantly like trying because she knows it's going to mess up her, her whole zhuzh. So she's like just not really loving the fact that she has to put this over her head. And with the four of you hooded and headed off, um, Barry, I suspect that you're probably using Baby Shark to try and figure out where you are when all of this is said and done. Um, so the black hoods are are purely ceremonial at this point. Um, but uh, Robbie lets you know as soon as you make it to one of the main highways, you're free to remove them. Um, so Angel, you didn't have to have it on that long. It was like maybe five minutes. Um, and after a couple minutes in traffic, because this is a very large event, you all arrive at the Olympia Theater, which is a gorgeous venue. Um, Core, you know that this place is hard to get, really expensive, but worth every penny. It is a stunning building and also real. If anyone feels like looking it up, it's gorgeous. I want to go there now. Um, but you all pull up in front of the building and um, Robbie kind of, he's at some point in this interaction while you guys were all in the prep room, he put his suit back on and you see him get out of the passenger seat and he comes and he opens the door for you like a chauffeur might um, to escort you all uh, out of the car and to the entrance to the, the Olympia theater. No uh, resistance, nothing like that. Oh. Not going to spin in his eye. Uh, Barry, I will ask. Um, it's going to look really weird if you bring the drone through the front door with you. Is there some other way that you would like to direct Baby Shark? Um, yes. Um, okay. I have uh, a perk called Autonomous. Okay. Um, so I am going to set uh, Baby Shark up on a um a patrol pattern um sort of uh is this a tall is this a high-rise building it's not a high-rise but it is it's a large building it is it is a performance hall so it has a lot of space then i'm gonna set um baby shark on a um patrol mission around specifically taking note of any exterior exits visible to the building all right um and he's just going to continue keeping an eye on comings and goings. Okay. Um, the four of you exit the Suburban and uh, you watch as Robbie and the Suburban sort of pull away um, from the curb, leaving the four of you to infiltrate, to collect intel, to figure out what the fuck is going on here. And as you step over the threshold and into the building... Core for a minute, this almost feels normal to you. People are laughing. There are waiters bussing around with glasses of champagne. Um, everyone appears to be enjoying themselves. Angel, you recognize that there's tons of designer clothes here. And it all just feels very fine and very human. Um, Angel, go ahead and roll me your wits into cult. Well, do. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, got two crits and oh wow, two crits and four regular successes. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so Diego and Barry, you two have sort of like a spike of social anxiety, I imagine, walking through. So this isn't quite comfortable for you the way that it is for Core and Angel. Um, but Angel you take a few steps into the room and where you had felt just sort of the comfort of being back amongst humans in a very uh, human environment, that anxiety, those pangs, that feeling starts welling up within you again. And you sort of grip Core's wrist just out of instinct. You need to be grounded at this moment. Um, and you get the sense of creatures 
all around you. And you particularly sense one coming towards you. And you open your eyes to see a man in a navy blue suit approaching. Um, and he turns to you, Cor, and he goes, Cor, I didn't know you were going to be here. And Cor, the face that stares back at you is Warrant. Uh, Cor would hug him and kiss him on both cheeks. <laughs> and Angel, the chill of fear just washes over you as it dawns on you that Cor is hugging a monster right now. And that's where we'll stop tonight, I think. Ooh. Um, oh, boy. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. I know that was a lot of roundabout, but I wanted to make sure that everyone got the cool gadgets that they wanted for our finale. Um, so that'll be next week's going to be an interesting, an interesting go. You don't really know exactly what you're looking for, but it didn't seem like um, Colonel Kellogg sent you with any particular idea in mind. Um, this will be interesting to say the least uh before we go let's let's hear from you guys and and hear what you're up to right now uh justice tell us where people can find you hey everybody you can find me on the socials as stash mandu and um monday nights nat one funds channel we're doing an improv thing most most mondays and um soon uh bleeding kansas which is a v5 game will be on gehenna gaming um where i play a truly terrible ventru that is out of his depth at this point. He's he's stepped too far. Spectacular. Uh, Brianna, how about you? Hi, guys. I'm Brianna. Um, I go by Utahime on social media. Um, you can find me at Utahime Cosplay on Facebook, Instagram, here on Twitch, and TikTok now, and at Brianna DeCosta on Twitter. Um, I'm a cosplayer and lover of all things tabletop role playing. <laughs> uh, so you can find me, uh, oh, obviously, on socials if you want to see what tabletop shenanigans I'm up to on a weekly basis. So definitely uh, stay tuned. There'll be more announcements, and I will be at Gen Con, so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Yay, Luis, how about you? Hey, I'm Luis Carrazzo. I am uh, an actor. Uh, uh, I'll talk about the films that I have in the festivals right now again. Uh, 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 of, of Hearts and Castles, if you follow me on social media, I'll post whenever uh, it, you're able to screen it. A lot of uh, film festivals are, are digital as well as in person right now. Uh, and don't tear, tear, don't tear yourself apart of the two films that I have that are making the festival rounds um and i know of hearts and castles is still is i think actually currently playing in one that has digital access to it uh and then tomorrow night you can catch me on critical role uh exandria unlimited calamity um where i am trying not to die <laughs> seems to be a theme for you yeah yes it sure is um we'll figure out what happened with that pill next week too that should be an adventure um, let this be a cautionary tale to everybody. When anyone just gives you a pill, you don't take it. I'm just like, I'm throwing that out there. I, as the storyteller, am completely thrown for a loop here. So we'll see how this goes. Um, Matrix. It taught us bad lessons. Boy. I mean. <laughs> it was a choice. You know, I, the edge. it was very Diego. I'm all about it. Um, last <laughs> but certainly not least, Marquia, where can people find you? Uh, yeah, I'm Markeia McCarty. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, uh, M-A-R-K-E-I-A-M-C-C-A-R-T-Y. Twitch and TikTok is Darth Markeia, as in Darth Vader. And uh, Saturdays, you can find me on Pixel Circus, 6 p.m. Pacific time, doing damsels, dice, and everything nice um, as Monica Rambo, uh, but as a princess. And uh, yes, and also I am also going to Gen Con and I hope to see y'all there. Uh, uh, there are two shows that I can say that I'm a part of. Uh, I'm part of a D&D TikTok creators uh, D&D one-off, uh, which is super fun and is ridiculous. Like all of the the D&D TikTokers that you really enjoy, like Dice Cream Sandwich or One Shot Questers and the such, um, we are doing a, <laughs> we're doing a four-hour campaign. So that will be uh, the Friday.
Friday of Gen Con. And I am also um, part of the cast for Dimension 20's Magics and Misfits that will be happening on Saturday uh, during Gen Con. So I believe tickets are still uh, available for that uh, as, as of the time for this. So uh, go ahead and uh, grab that and, and see you in Indianapolis. Not for long, because I'm going to buy him out. Um, <laughs> thank you guys for joining us tonight. I'm Diana D'Amico. I've been your storyteller this evening. Um, I can't wait to uh, to try and kill you all next week. It's going to be such a good time. It's We'll laugh. We'll cry. We'll probably have a glass of champagne. Um, can't wait to see what happens with Battle Cat. I don't have a lot that I, my I'm I'm head empty right now head empty all hunter uh so find me on twitter at Demico diana for all of the cool things that i'm working on right now um but otherwise thank you guys so much for joining us we'll see you next week for the finale of the day shift a hunter the reckoning story set in miami see you guys then